the Batman is a success. What this means to the industry plus the WB is created driven now. All next on Just the Talk. So let's talk. And welcome, welcome, welcome to the Flicks, Picks, and the Nitpicks. And I am your humble host, Snow718. And let's get into this. Another rousing episode of Just the Talk. And we're going to first off talk about, please no spoilers on the Batman in the comment section till your boy finally sees the movie. I shall not talk about how I did not see it this weekend. I should have. Your boy works. I almost did. Everything worked out the way he needed to, even though the idea and the mission was to go see the movie. But I will be seeing it this week. Guarantee come out of high water. I'm going to find a way to see this movie. I've been trying to avoid online. So, my just the talks, if you already know, it's pre recorded. So, we're going to, I'm going to try and jump into a couple of conversations, catching it up, looking up at a couple of, catching up on what I missed out on. Because, you know, just the talk, I want us to get us into the talk, into the conversation. So, I have to kind of be abreast on what you guys are talking about and I utilize a lot of different things such as what I may come across in articles for but the primary source lately has been through the YouTube network because I'm on YouTube so I tend to read a lot of comments and shit like that and the other YouTubers that I listen to way more of a listenership than me just to make sure that I can get an understanding and a gauge of what the audience is looking for listening to and kind of what the conversation is in the space because I kind of read and look at a lot of the information that they do too. Not as much as of late, which is crazy. Um, get backed up with so much stuff, but needless to say, we're all kind of part of the same universe. And some of this type, the stuff that may be mainstream in our community, if you will, that may not bleed over into other pockets of the movie fandom universe, if you will. There is a kind of common thread a lot of times and depending on which pockets of areas that you be at, you'll still find a kind of like a synergy with what's going on. That being said, I go out there try to get into the information as much as I can, but I but I do read up a little bit on certain things and what we gotta talk about is a success. We gotta clap it up. The success for the WB and the Batman. Um, it seems like I forgot the fuck I was quoted for, but I knew it wasn't gonna do no three hundred or nothing like that. I didn't think it was gonna do that. I thought it was like I said sixty five. Maybe I think I said as high as 85, I might have said, or 225, I might have gave it, but um, it, it, it did what it was supposed to do. It did, um, let's get accurate on, on here, because I've seen a couple different sources, but for the most part, the numbers seem to comf- comfortably rest at about, ooh, 128.5 million or 128 yeah 128.5 million opening weekend and i think it's all and that might also be adding in and let me make sure and clear yeah i and this comes from collider 57 million on friday including previews okay I guess that's also Thursday night with uh, Friday. Another 43 million on Saturday and a estimated 28 million on Sunday. This is the highest opening weekend of 2022, the highest of Director Matt Reeves' career, and the highest pandemic era debut for Warner Brothers. And that comes from Collider. All right. That being said, now. Just reading that and just getting an understanding of how successful it was. And when they say including previews, like I said, I think that might be talking about like Thursday night. Because this is technically opens in the evening. At night time, if you will. Or maybe even at midnight. 
I guess because it's not a full Thursday, you have to bring it into Friday. And if you're going to add a lot for Friday, you have to also say he had people that came in and saw it as soon as it opened. But that being said, that's neither here nor there. It did pretty good. Not as crazy as people going to ask, but the information that's being out there, they're actually putting it in a good light, which is very different for the WB, but they need to. This works both ways for the WB. Let's really talk about it. Feel me? This works very well. Like, and I want, and I'm not com coming from it from an angry fandom point of view. I'm really coming from it from a business aspect because the business has to upsell this shit, and it did pretty damn good for its opening weekend. So you upsell it as the best, highest opening weekend since um, Suicide Squad in 2016. You you amp it up. You make it look like yo, we did it, we did it. You know, high fives everywhere because Shazam didn't do it, Birds of Prey didn't do it. So this next regime is going to really amp up and ramp up this W, especially post the Snyder Cut being released, which, let's be fair, enough. I think it did very, very good, especially more, more so worldwide than within the States, I would argue. Because even though it feels big here, we may be a lot smaller of a community than people might assume just coming off top because at the end of the day, it kind of is what it is. A lot of people that weren't really into the movie news and information until like the MCU kind of brought people into this um, space. As time went on, little by little, people are finding more and more places on YouTube where you can find these type of fandoms existing and talking about the things that you love to talk about and that we all love to talk about. So they got to go push this weekend that weekend their first as a big success no matter what anyone says and let's be fair it's done better than other films on their opening weekends and this is post the pandemic you got to keep that asterisk in mind because let me be fair and let's see what man of steel's opening weekend was let's just do that just so we can get a a comfortable understanding you know, if you will, of what we're looking at. Because um, I can't remember off top. We're going to do Man of Steel. And then we're also going to look at the BVS. Okay, that's not coming up. I wanted to do the acronym. Now, brother, got to go type the whole shit out. Here it goes. 128, yeah. But that was prior to the um, pandemic. But most people argue now and compare it to what Marvel was doing, which would be disingenuous because Marvel was already like, what, maybe seven years ahead? No, excuse me, not seven years. They was probably about five years ahead already. Um, let's go BVS. All right, it says BVS was is was my um, Warner Brothers at one point at one point biggest box office opening ever. I'm seeing one seventy point one million. I'm seeing some reports saying one sixty six. It made eight fifty five worldwide. Okay, so now they could argue that this is they have been more successful than anything that Zack Snyder had. I mean, well, not not more successful, excuse me. It's only just opening first weekend and adding the second week of sales. It looks like it's going to trend towards a billion, especially with the critical response. And if you ask me, people who have been longing for an event film and something completely different from Marvel now. Now everybody wants something different from Marvel. I think this was the time that Zack Snyder could have existed. But let's not take nothing away from Matt Reeves and what he was able to provide 
to the screen because Matt Reeves was able to achieve something, especially post this weird ass situation and pandemic. And, and when I mean by situation, situation with Warner Brothers and this weird fandom, weird shit going on and the whole Zack Snyder cut and all the fiasco, he was able to kind of rise above and be able to present a film that people could actually say, hey, we feel like he was able to do what he wanted to do and this was a damn good film. That being said now, it's a success. It's a success so far. And we're going into the second weekend. And at, at its second weekend now, if you if I'm not mistaken, it's about two fifty four. Um it's about I believe it's two fifty four million worldwide or two fifty eight worldwide. Yeah, around 258 worldwide. That's what I'm seeing from Deadline website. So, and it says plus. No, actually, no, it says 258 worldwide deadline. Oh, no, that was on um, the first weekend. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My fault, my fault. That was the first weekend. I'm like, yeah, something's wrong here. Because we're at our second weekend. This is Sunday night. Early Monday morning, if you will, but it's the night to me because I'm recording after a little bit after midnight. And I don't see it added up anywhere, which is kind of weird. It says it's headed towards a $66 million this weekend, and which drops about half. Which is pretty good for what they're looking for. Yeah. So right now, until we get the worldwide box office numbers for the weekend, I'm seeing posters already on certain tubers saying this. Trending towards the billion. I wanted to say hold up, hold up, hold up. But let's be fair. You never know. I mean, it's still a worldwide market. We don't know how the next weekends are going to be. But it's getting a great critical response. The reception is there. So let's be fair now. And people do want to come out of, you know, where we at in this um, pandemic. So let's be real. We're, we're trying to come to the theaters and come out of this shit. Fine. So it's doing good. And the next question is, is... What does this all mean now for the future of the WB moving forward? Because everybody is curious now. You know what I mean? Like, 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 the, what is what does it mean for the industry that the second week it came in? Well, right now, if you ask me, it really, it really boils down to. The moving going community wants to go, come back outside. That's evident. They want to come outside, but they, but we also understand that they want to come outside for they or rather they they are willing to come outside for event films. So to be fair, event films will rise above the rest. That's why they're saying that they're going to raise the prices on them. But we'll talk about that another time. With AMC. Stay focused. So, we know the industry is going to try to make more attempts at larger budgeted films. Now, for WB, we know WB is going to want to focus more back onto their what works for them independent stories and that's what they're already talking about independent stories makes perfect sense because that's what they've been working with so far and i think that's where they're going to put most of the future towards they already have a dceu operating right now so you know what they could always marry it onto this young batman and reboot the whole universe but if there's anything to salvage from this universe, we can make it live on in some sort of way. And why not on um, Disney Plus? 
excuse me, not Disney Plus, um, HBO Max. It would just be a wiser decision because you need more content. And if you already have a fandom already there, I might as well cater to it because they are going to buy in and stay in with this. I don't want to inherit all this. I need to stop all of this. I need to figure out a way that we can keep Zack Snyder in under the wing because it's not just for the films that he could do with DC. People got to remember Zack Snyder is still a filmmaker. I'm. You might want to. It might behoove you to 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 get deal with him. And if he's interested in coming back for this, that's great, fine. Now, and also, we could maybe perhaps sign him with an exclusive deal to do other films, not just within the DCEU. You could do something outside of it if he's motivated towards it. Remember, Nolan is the type of guy like that. And Nolan tapped Zack Snyder. And I'm not saying that means that these guys are completely the same person now, but I'm just saying that... The fact that they can relate to each other in some sort of fashion that Nolan thought that that was a wise decision to go with him for Zack Snyder for a man of steel. Well, that kind of just sets the tone. Now WB has to look at what, what works. They're going to upsell this shit. Like I said before, upsell the shit out of it. It's a success. What works now? We left directors alone. That wasn't the first time they learned that lesson. That was the second or third time. First lesson was from finding out there was critical response from Zack Snyder's Justice League. You couldn't deny it. And let's be for real. You kind of wanted to water it down and wanted it to go away. And, wanted, and, and let's be fair. The fandom is the reason they started becoming fucking obnoxious it was ways to handle this like professionals treat it like a business let's do business let's make this a hustle let's make this something that we can actually realistically think the that think that we can make them feel like it's within their advantage to work with us so we can see what Zack Snyder got going on. Zack Snyder should not leave this universe. Allow him to do his job. I'm not saying he should have absolutely no oversight. But all I am saying is stay the course for the most part. If you're going to change anything, change things that makes sense. Like, nah, let's not make that Dick Grayson that died. We want to expand the universe. That would make sense. Let's shoot that now. Let's shoot... Which I really, my biggest pet peeve is, let's, we should have shot down this whole having Gotham across the bay. I, I hate that, but we went with it, you know, because I also understand what he was trying to illustrate in that film. And it made more sense to have him a little closer than to have him so far apart, but I did not like that. Not at all. Because if you have to have Batman leaving from Gotham with these guys to chase over to find Martha or where would Martha be put at how would he even understand you know Metropolis to be driving around there looking for them there and what would possess them to leave her someplace in Gotham where Batman could figure out that's his hometown his background would make no sense for the Luther to want to hide her out somewhere there unless they already lived in not in each other's proximity so I can understand why for a narrative it would make sense that you place them strategically where you needed them to be for this to work but oversight no <laughs> we shouldn't have did it but we did that fine the thing is is that a little bit of oversight will it is just you protecting your baby what you own the owners protecting the ip and see that's your kevin feige of the director whether you like it or not why do you think not every director could that they sat down with always wanted to work with them because they understood that there was going to be gross oversight it's understood so that's why when I hear people getting mad at certain things, even with the Ray Fisher thing, why he didn't have any input in the film, it's because we tried that before with that variation. Everybody did not like what was going on before leading up to this. So they needed a course correct to save what they had going. So what they did was they changed everything. You just came in the middle of it and you had to deal with that shit. 
but it's theirs to change, to do whatever they feel they need to do to maximize their profits. It's the business. Gross oversight. They didn't need to ask you for your input. This is the movie. We don't need any more input. Let's go. Because we got we got a schedule. And we got a lot to do. We're, we're fixing something already shot. Quote, unquote. In terms of fixing, if you want to call it fixing, because I, I really liked, I really loved what I seen out of Zack Snyder's Justice League. Real shit, you feel me? So, I think for the industry now, it's gonna let people think that let's not be so hasty with our directors, and if we're gonna get directors to sign them on, let's not pull what Disney's been doing, making all these mistakes, signing people on. And just to have to let them go because you're not on the same page. Figure that shit out from the rip. Otherwise, you're going to keep finding yourself in this type of weird cycle dealing with that. And I don't think that's the direction that anybody would like to find themselves in. That being said. The du WB is... So I've heard, I don't know, I'm hearing out there in these streets <laughs> that is going to be creator driven now. Now for all those guys, this is more of an inside for insiders that get it. But for those on the outside just visited, I mean, if you're just coming in and you've even understood that the two versions of the, uh, uh, the, the, the Justice League, the Snyder Cut, which is Zack Snyder, um, its official name is Zack Snyder, is Justice League. And you have the Justice League, Justice League theatrical version. And if you notice the differences uh, outside of length, you'll understand. So, to see, I believe, Toby Emmerich put a quote out there when discussing the success. And like I said, I'm not mad at it. You have to upsell. You see what I'm saying? You have to upsell your successes, especially when you got all this weird, whack, dramatic shit going on between you and some, you know, fandoms, is 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 just not going to be the way. But I'm getting this from Movie Web. The quote: "The secret of the movie business is quality." The best business strategy for both theatrical motion pictures and superhero movies. The movies don't have to all have the same tone or interlock with other DC movies or have an, an Easter egg that sets up another film. Quality is the most important factor for the studio and the biggest thing you can do to influence quality is the filmmaker that you hire. Yeah, think about that. Let's. Let me read it again one more time for you. The secret of the movie business is quality. The best business strategy for both theatrical motion pictures and superhero movies. The movies don't have to all have the same tone or interlock with other DC movies or have an Easter egg that sets up another film. Quality is the most important factor for a studio and the biggest thing you can do to influence quality is the filmmaker that you hire. Boom. So when reading that, it sounds like choice words, but then you'd have to ask yourself, where was this? This has to be an, an obviously it's a now statement, but where was this type of energy prior? It took the Snyder Cut, not this film. You sh this quote should have been pulled after the release of the Snyder Cut, but you might have gotten that to the fans had the fans been more... If you ask me, found oh, less antagonistic and more thankful <coughs> and appreciative, extremely verbally with campaigns expressing it as much as you wanted to get the film out. Just to show that if down the line you needed to do this again, we could do this with less aggression. We could do it as real legitimate dope campaigns to motivate the studios to see that this fandom is visible and there's money to be made and you would have to provide them with that kind of 
research and visualization in terms of how much people you can bring and business you can bring to that business. Now that said, we should already have seen that online. A lot of YouTubers are going to feel a way about that quote. And to be fair, I feel a way. I think it's... um. Because when you read it, the first thing you go to is a Zack Snyder cut situation. And, I, and, and to be fair, like I said, I mean, I'm watching this from a different angle. And again, I get the quote. That's business. That's a business quote, bro. Like, I'm not crying no river over it. But I also understand how people can feel when you read this and then feel a, like, yo, man. But, yo, y'all was just playing the bro. Like, like, like y'all not like that. That's not you. But... Let's be fair, that may have to be them now. That may be them now. So they, we have to allow them to be able to say that. In saying that now, if Zack Snyder comes into the fold, in, whether it's theatrical or online, because I believe there's a quote floating out there that they came at him about um, Ben Affleck doing a series or HBO Max before I think they even talked about I guess that Batman Gotham PD thing or something to that effect I think it was before that they reached out to him and he said no he wanted his to be a movie and that was that you know what I mean and will there be something to that conversation again I hope so but for right now this is what we have And if that was said, it's possible that, you know, you there's a space that it's possible that if with their with them having an online source, you have opportunities to put things elsewhere out there. You know what I'm saying? They were willing to go to HBO Max for his series. Maybe they may mine it for other projects. With Zack Snyder still carrying on the universe. And maybe, just maybe, Ben Affleck will change his mind or get that theatrical film he wants. It's possible. But we know one thing. After this Discovery merger content will have to come and why not mind what you have especially when people want event films these are gonna have to go to the theaters if you want to make your your big box office and if you want to split it down the middle make it live on on hbo max if you need to categorize it properly and make the new theatrical film start with matt reeves the batman or whatever spins off after that if you have to start all over again with a new superman do it all over there like I'm not against it. I prefer seeing Zack Snyder's in the big theaters in the on the big screen. But hey, I'll take it the way it is. It is what it is. In closing, in closing, with that being said, the uh, You're going to have to expect that as the Batman continues to succeed, and if it ever even gets an Oscar nomination for anything, this is they're going to act like this has been the biggest thing they've ever done before, prior to anything that comes out of Zack Snyder's universe. And you can't get mad, to be fair, because no matter what they say, we're not going to like it, and then we're going to blow it up online, and it only makes more, builds a more antagonistic relationship between the creators and us now what i don't want to see is if Zazlab does not respond in accordance into the t to where the fans expect them to move because they we all know better for some reason then he may just get annoyed and just say you know what fuck it i was going to try and do something for y'all but fuck it it's just not worth it and now i see why they did what they did and that's what i don't want to see happen because if that happens then i don't think we'll have any other opportunity any other opportunity to reach air cut or anything else so we need to be on our p's and q's but until i can really die, dig a little deeper on that we're going to just leave this episode to a close 
you know, hopefully, whenever, because I'm going to try and add these videos out for you. Someday, real soon this week, you will get a video hearing me talk a whole lot of cash money about this movie. Because by then, I'd finally effing see it. Till then, leave it all in the comments below. Let me know how you feel about everything that we just talked about. And like, share, subscribe. See you next time. And as always, till I have a better outro, chill.